The Court of Appeal has ruled uh, against you in a case of a single parent who is uh, subject to such domestic abuse that, that she had to install a secure panic room in her house and or in the case of a teenager with acute mental and physical disabilities. Why would you appeal against that ruling involving cases like that? Well, of course, most people with disabilities are exempted from the removal of the spare room subsidy. A very small number of cases, the two you've mentioned, have slipped through the cracks. And that is exactly what the discretionary housing payment fund is there to sort out. And both of the cases you mentioned, Andrew, have been receiving discretionary housing payments. So take the case of Mr Rutherford, the gentleman with the disabled grandson. He lost £14 a week when the subsidy got removed, but he got given back £14 a week by the discretionary housing payment, uh, which left him exactly where he started. So the, the system is working, and but, these discretionary housing payments are making up the difference for those very small number of cases that have slipped through the cracks. But many people will wonder, when, we, when it involves such terrible cases of a woman who was raped, who was beaten, and who needed a panic room, and, uh, and a family with a mental and physical disability teenager uh, that simply needed a spare room for overnight carers, that's all they were asking for, that that needs to be discretionary, surely in a welfare state, that that should be automatic. Well, look, it's completely reasonable they have the, uh, the money available and it's been made available by the housing fund. You mentioned the domestic violence cases, those are very serious. There are, I think, 231 out of the initially 800,000, now 500,000 cases. 280, 280, thank you. Um, so we are talking about a, rel a very small proportion of cases and they are getting the money. The most important thing is the cases you mentioned, which are very serious, are getting the money. That's so the they're, get, they're getting the money? Well, they're not, unfortunately, Andrew. The truth is the government produced their own evaluation of the bedroom tax. It came out just before Christmas. You saw me mention it in the clip a moment ago. It says categorically 75% of the 450,000 families affected by the bedroom tax don't get any discretionary housing payments. So Chris is right that in this instance, uh, Paul Rutherford and his family were lucky enough, and the other uh, person whose identity we don't know, who's a rape victim, were lucky enough to get discretionary housing payments. Uh, however, in the first instance, Paul Rutherford's family were refused by Pembrokeshire County Council. They appealed, they got it, but it wasn't about the £14 a week that they were losing, it was the principal. And in truth for them, £14 a week would have been a lot of money. And initially, of course, they thought they were losing it, which is why they were brave enough to take I mean, it. And, I, and I've met them. They are, they are a lovely, loving couple who've looked after Warren, who is a 15-year-old who's got really profound disabilities. And I just think it extraordinary that the government I, is going to the Supreme Court to defend this. It is I, indefensible. I mean, isn't it the danger uh, of the point about discretionary payments is that the rules are unclear. They're only paid over a limited period. Mm. They could only cover part of the costs that are required, and sometimes you need to reapply. Now, aren't these families, haven't they got enough to worry about without having to go through this rigmarole? Well, in, in the case of Mr Rutherford, it covered all of uh, the £14, not part of it. And the uh, discretionary housing fund is £870 million pounds this parliament. That's enough to take care of 200,000 people like Mr Rutherford. So there are lots of people who can be helped out. But the wider principle of the spare room subsidy is right. Um, 800,000 people initially, now half a million people, um, were receiving extra money for rooms they weren't using, which doesn't apply to people receiving housing benefit in the private sector. So first of all, it's a point of fairness. Why should people in public housing get a better deal than people in private housing? And secondly, where people are occupied buying flats or houses that are too big. When we've got other families in overcrowded accommodation, it makes sense to just move people around a bit so that families who need those extra rooms have them. And about 50,000 people so far have moved into smaller accommodation because they didn't need the bigger flat. And people who are overcrowded have moved into the bigger flat. That is just common sense as well as fairness. So isn't that, that better use of our housing stock? The government's claiming it's saving about a million pounds a day in welfare payments as a result, uh, which could pay for 18,000 nurses or 13,000 police officers. Well, it would be true, perhaps, in those terms, if, if it, positive rather, if it were true. And if the minister were here and not Chris as a sacrificial lamb, he could tell you that it's only 5% of people who've been affected by this who've been able to move. The truth is there aren't sufficient one- and two-bedroom flats or houses for people to move to. And we've now got a problem with uh, housing associations and local authorities with too many three- and four-bedroom houses because they can't move people into them. But the fundamental question here, Andrew, is unfortunately not the these matters of pounds, shillings and pence because they're relatively small amounts of money. It is the moral question of discriminating against people who are doing a service to our country, looking after 
uh, relatives who would be a burden on the state otherwise, and it is a complete red herring and a total short-termist you know, lack of efficiency to punish these people and diminish their ability to look after their relatives. You're dealing with some of the most vulnerable people in the country with the greatest needs. Why not make life a bit simpler for them? Well, the discretionary... It's difficult enough for them. Look, I mean, it's very hard to, to write legislation in Westminster that covers every single individual sure. circumstance. There are Just always, scrap it. There are always Just a small get rid of it. I think about 0.1% of cases have slipped through the net and they're being taken care of by discretionary housing payments. And it's right that those are in place to help people like the two cases we've discussed who need help. That help is available. Is there a bit worried about this? I mean, beforehand, though, uh, <coughs> for the people we're talking about, the payments were automatic. Uh, and it was one thing less to worry about. Now it's discretionary. They've got to go through a process. There's always the fear that you don't get it or that you won't get as much as, as you were place. getting. Uh, and is, aren't we just heaping an extra concern, as I say, on people who've already got their hands full with serious human problems? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the alternative is, is, is to scrap it entirely, as, as um, Owen was suggesting a moment ago. Which is but what that we should But do. that would then mean that people in public housing are getting a better deal than people in private housing, which is just unfair. And it would mean that a number of people who don't need to live in larger houses are living in larger houses or flats. So I think this is, this is the most eff effective way of dealing with what is a significant problem. Just I, I, do, I, I completely accept that Mr Rutherford um, should receive the money. I completely accept that. The only difference is between us is, is the mechanism for transmitting that money. And I think the um, discretionary housing payment system is the best way of doing that without Chris, upsetting Chris, the, the entire court, The courts ruled yesterday that this is illegal. The Court of Appeals said not only is it wrong, it's illegal. It is well, why is if, if they're already getting, if they are still getting the money, but through a different yeah. mechanism, which we can agree or disagree is a weaker mechanism yeah. or a more fraught with di difficulty yeah. mechanism, but if they're still getting the money they would be entitled to under the previous uh, housing benefit system, why would it be illegal? Well, because it is discriminatory. That was the point that they ruled. But under, they're under the, the money, European, why is it discrimination? Because, for example, Chris said a moment ago that all disabled people are exempted. It's not true. Disabled children are not exempted. The very point that was brought to the court was in the court of appeal case. Yeah, the very point that was brought to the court was versus disabled adults who are exempted well, under the bedroom tax. Yes, disabled well, me, children are not exempted. Let me put that point. That's what's discriminatory, and that's why it's illegal. He's the closest we've got to a government spokesman. Well, uh, usual. Uh, 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 Duncan Smith. Don't, hey, don't you don't have to tell me about that. Um, if I'm looking after a disabled adult, then I still qualify for that's the housing right. benefit. If I'm looking after well, a disabled child, I don't. What, well, why the, would you make that distinction? Well, the, I think the why assumption. Well, I mean, I think the assumption when the rules were written a couple of years ago is that the parents would look after the disabled child, and therefore you wouldn't need a room for a carer. Now, in this case, the disabilities were so severe that an, an extra carer was required, and mm. that's why the money was made available. But let's just sort of take a step back and look at this whole scheme. I mean, the fact is, it is help. It is encouraging people to work uh, to go into work. Hundreds of thousands of, as a result of this reform and other welfare reforms, hundreds of thousands of people in the last five years have moved off welfare and into work. It saves the taxpayer money, but more importantly, it gives these people a way out of poverty. All right, well, you've broadened it out. Let mm. me just finish on two general questions for you. Well, for, for, first to you, Chris Fitz. Uh, can you tell, as I see it from the government's figures, they're still looking for £12 billion pounds of mm. welfare cuts by 2020. Can you give us an idea of where, where that... 12 billion is going to come from now. Yeah, well, I mean, the welfare bill that's uh, currently going through Parliament, it had its um, report stage in the House of Lords yesterday, um, will find 70% of those £12 billion of savings, for example, by introducing the welfare cap, so you can't uh, get more than, I think, it's £23,000 a year in London or £20,000 a year. That very much. Outside. Well, that's one of many measures. The, the, the bill is an enormous bill. Uh, it freezes benefits um, for people who aren't disabled for the next four years. All and, of the measures together... And, the, and this bill between, between them will produce the £12 billion? Well, it'll, it'll produce 70% of them. And, of okay. course, more importantly, we are getting people off welfare into work. The figures that came out last right. week showed we now have record employment in this no, country. You Unemployment, <laughs> it's an important point, unemployment is down uh, to a 10-year low. So getting people off welfare into work is the best solution. And it's not any more important by you repeating it. I still understand okay, it's important sorry. because I've got one more question <laughs> for you. Has Labour just given up on welfare reform? Could you give us a, a, an example of where Labour would reform welfare? 
Can I start by answering the question, Chris? No, we asked. haven't got time. So you could just answer mine. I tell mine. you the 10 billion, it's 8 billion yeah, of it is going but, to come right. from taking money away from working What's... families on universal credit. 4 billion will true. come from, yes, it is true, it's from the work right. allowance in the work bill that you just described. 4 billion will okay. come away from working families. A further right. 4 so you're billion against, comes you're from... against the 12 billion cuts. Could you give me an example of a major welfare reform Labour would make? I wouldn't be offering the corporate welfare to Google that the government are presently doing. As you know, that, that's be offering... not the answer to my well, question either, is but it? It's the one I'm going to so give you me. have given up on welfare reform? No, Andrew, look, the bottom line is I don't think we should be engaged in a Dutch auction with the no, government on which things we're going to take away Can you give me an example of welfare reform? Like the you can't give me an example of any poor, welfare reform, poor example, correct? And I'm not interested in engaging in that conversation. Okay, I I'll think we're that about as, trying I'll to take, say... I'll what, take that in as four enough. years' time, does welfare reform look like? It well, will look very different under Labour. It will look very different under Labour. Thank you both.